So, um, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizers of this conference for this invitation um, to contribute to this conference, and I would like to, uh, to thank them also for um, the invitation of the conference in uh, its uh, first uh, uh, stage, um, which invited us to uh, reflect on uh, the manuscript visual impression and expression, and the visual impression produced by the artifacts and their patrons, and the visual expressions of the religious conviction of the faithful. This is what the uh, original invitation uh, said. Uh, so the, um, the attention to the development of manuscripts a long time for answering new needs. And for this reason, I am uh, very glad to have the opportunity to present my current project uh, on Quranic manuscript because its uh, ultimate goal is exactly to understand uh, to which needs the vocalization system uh, answered uh, a long time. Um, the project is a co-joint project funded by the HRC and the DEFK and started in 2020. I am the copy I at Hamburg, and Jeffrey Kahn is the copy I at the University of Cambridge. So the German team um, at the University of Hamburg is working on the Quranic manuscript material, and the British team at the University of Cambridge is investigating Syriac and Hebrew Bible manuscripts. Uh, the purpose of the project, uh, named the intertwined world of the oral and written transmission of sacred traditions in the Middle East, is to bring together strands of research related to various aspects of the uh, transmission of sacred texts in order to reach a deeper understanding of the intertwined world uh, of the oral and the written and the intertwined world of the three major religions of the Middle East at their formative periods of development during the early Islamic centuries. So the Arabic Quran, Syriac Bible, Hebrew Bible all uh, were transmitted in oral and written form and the modes of transmission of these traditions converge at, uh, to a remarkable degree in the medieval Middle East, reflecting uh, likely a close contact uh, between the various religious communities. So two particularly striking phenomena of convergence include first, the development of uh, a notation uh, system consisting mainly of dots and lines, as we have seen uh, in Marine presentation. Uh, added to the consonantal skeleton of the script, representing the uh, oral reading traditions in the early Islamic period, and secondly, the assimilation of the mode of transmission of the Hebrew Bible in the 10th, uh, 11th century to that of the Arabic Quran. So the embryonic development of such notation system is attested simultaneously in the early Quranic manuscript and contemporary Syriac Bible manuscripts. So the convergence of the transmission modes of the Hebrew Bible with the Quran reached its extreme point in a corpus of Hebrew Bible manuscripts written in Arabic transcription by the Jewish Karite community in the 10th and 11th century. So as regards uh, my work, so as regards the work on the uh, individual uh, tradition with the, uh, this multidisciplinary project, I'm working on the Quranic manuscripts uh, with a specific target at uh, the diacritic layers uh, that have been developed and added along the time. And in particular, I'm looking at the vowel dot layer, uh, dots and lines, so partially uh, overlapping uh, uh, with marine uh, research questions. Uh, the analysis of the description of the diacritic system uh, given in medieval treatises uh, and the analysis of their correspondence in the extant early Quranic manuscript have uh, already been uh, carried out and uh, Mairead already mentioned, and I like to repeat at least uh, names of people present in the room, so uh, Alan George and Eleanor Sellar. So these previous works uh, uh, have identified correspondences between the accounts uh, and the physical objects with important contributions in establishing a possible classification of codes and regional habits in the manuscript vocalization system. So uh, moreover, the works by um, Yasin Datton and 
um, and, and the others are indeed, uh, so Alan George and Eleanor Sellar, are indeed instrumental for reading the manuscripts and making hypotheses about the provenance and date of their vocalization system. Uh, so building upon uh, the results of this previous work, uh, this previous analysis of the vocalization system, uh, in the project we are following this uh, investigation focusing on um, mainly on the diachronic development of the system and the stratification of several layers of diacritics, the distribution of diacritics, so the distribution of uh, vowels, uh, consonantal diacritics, and uh, any markup signs or annotations, and then the different usages, uh, I mean the exploration of usages and the richness of details that are not described in the medieval treatises, so a concept already stressed by Alan George in uh, his uh, uh, 2015 article, uh, somehow experienced by uh, Yassin Datton in his 2017 article, and uh, also experienced by Moraine, as we, we have uh, heard. And then, particularly in connection with the uh, multidisciplinary approach of the project, uh, we are focusing on the relationship between the oral and written uh, transmission, uh, meant as the oral dimension of the manuscript text, and in particular, uh, we are exploring uh, the suprasegmental signs. And then, of course, we are focusing on the uh, possible contacts between uh, patterns in Syriac, Hebrew, and Arabic uh, around the 7th, 8th century up to the uh, 10th, 11th century. And, of course, possible contacts or, or not. We are open. As regards the uh, methodology, uh, the investigation on the early Quranic manuscript focuses on a few fragments that have an incomplete vowel dot system. Uh, so this was the main uh, uh, criterion for uh, selecting the, uh, the corpus. So uh, with it, uh, an incomplete system like the uh, second manuscript from the left. Um, hopefully uh, this incomplete vowel dot system uh, encapsulates uh, the original function of these vowel dots and other diacritical signs that they were added from the 8th century on when Arab Muslims introduced uh, their first vocalization dot system, which was later replaced uh, uh, by uh, modern vowel letters that first appeared in non-Quranic manuscripts of the 9th century. So the Quranic manuscript continued uh, to use the archaic dot system, and some manuscripts have both system in their stratigraphy a sign of a long use over time, adapting the script of the early manuscript to the development of a new marker system in the Arabic writing. So innovation and, and conservatism are two overlapping phenomena uh, that characterize the Arabic writing system at, uh, at its beginning. So in, um, in our analysis um, of the uh, Quranic manuscript writing system, um, the, the methodology, so the, the analysis is based on a, a digital annotation of details in the uh, manuscript images. Uh, this is just a screenshot uh, uh, because I don't have the time to show the live uh, uh, software. So we annotate digitally uh, the uh, details of the manuscript uh, images for later being able to search and compare letters and diacritics, uh, thus applying what is called uh, digital plus paleography, uh, which is meant as self, uh, I'm quoting, self-reflective tools uh, to question models. Uh, we used to analyze the objects, uh, which is uh, Ariana Chula uh, definition and approach, and we are following this approach. So reading early Quranic manuscripts and interpreting uh, their early vocalization system that was later replaced with a more efficient system required to question the model uh, scholars built upon a one-to-one -one correspondence between the dot system and the modern letter system of vocalization. Uh, but of course, the passage from one system uh, to the other represents a reformatting uh, of the text and its reading in a new form. And here is, as I told you, is a screenshot of how we uh, annotate the um, letters and diacritic layer 
means consonantal diacritics, vowels, uh, or any other sign added to the consonantal skeleton um, by um, basically by annotating each detail. Here you can see we annotate the, uh, the dots as a dot with a certain color in a certain position, which is right, left, center, uh, baseline above or below, and other details. So the digital paleographic uh, um, annotations are uh, just an instrument for reading, questioning our model, and encoding the manuscript uh, text and features in an editorial environment that allows to create data from the manuscript that can be processed, analyzed, and mined for answering the research question proposed in, in our project, but also a research question related to the Quranic text in its uh, manuscript culture that are not part of um, this three-year uh, joint project. So data can be used, uh, for example, for phylogenetic analysis. Uh, as far as the um, the manuscript and uh, their text are uh, encoded in, in a certain way. So we create uh, and store our uh, transcription in uh, several formats, in XML, uh, but also in plain text, uh, in uh, JSON, and then in uh, XML TI, so following the uh, standard of the text encoding initiative. And these transcriptions are the input method uh, so we start from the first to the left uh, for uh, the input. And it's just a, an input method to collect our data for further processing and for being able to execute very specific and complex queries from the data of our transcriptions. We align the manuscript text with the Othmanic version of the Tanzil uh, Quranic text edition. And at the same time, uh, we also aligned it with the morphological information provided by the Leeds project. In this way, we can filter our results uh, by morphological traits as well as uh, compare it with the modern Quranic orthography. And of course, the, uh, the idea behind the different format uh, is that um, we, we thought about uh, data analysis but we also uh, thought about data shareability and sustainability and so that independently from the software we are using, from the website we are using, uh, data is stored in a certain way and can then be uh, uploaded in any repository and be there for a long time. And I built this model with my uh, colleague uh, Alicia Gonzalez Martinez. So in uh, their capacity as digital objects, uh, uh, we can and should restore the vowel dots and the diacritical layers of the manuscript back to their visual dimension and back to the manuscript page, abandoning the reformatting of the vowel dot system into the modern science system. And moreover, we should, and here I'm quoting a, a work uh, in uh, media studies, so uh, we should see the turn to digital images as yet another remediation of materially extant text in manuscripts uh, because media matter and that changes uh, in technological media will influence uh, human sensation, experience, knowledge, and or practice, end of quotation. So remediation of the manuscript page uh, is given by uh, the new experience that we can have uh, accessing manuscripts through the digital open access images. And of course, uh, one example is the, the uh, BNF. So questioning and reformatting the script we experience in the page. Uh, this of course could be further elaborated uh, in connection with new philology, with material uh, culture, uh, but because of time and uh, especially because we are still in the uh, middle of uh, our project collecting data, I will just uh, uh, show you two uh, situations uh, uh, I encountered in the uh, manuscript. So one situation is uh, uh, related to distribution of a symbol, so the symbol used for Shadda, and another situation is related to the possible meaning of the position of the vowel dots, uh, uh, and I mean put position in addition to the ones that we know from the uh, medieval treatises, so partially again overlapping moraine. Um, and the, the 
um, the, the first uh, uh, situation is, uh, as I told you, a symbol um, for the Tashdid. So we have more than one uh, symbol correspond, uh, corresponding to Tashdid uh, that nowadays is marked with a small sheen. And this picture, to my knowledge, is the model that we uh, know uh, up to now um, from the analysis of, of the manuscripts. Um, so the Tashdid indeed can be marked by, by zero or by a vowel dot only, so zero plus the vowel dot, a semicircle uh, that has been already connected with the letter dal uh, shape described by Adani, two semicircle uh, which uh, correspond to the small sheen uh, in Adani and correspond to the modern sign. And uh, lastly, the Tashdid can be marked by a color code as you can see in the uh, bottom left uh, uh, example. Uh, so the, the red dot uh, below the Ra in uh, Bilkhairi marks uh, uh, the vowel uh, I, uh, Kasra, while the blue dot below the letter Ra in uh, Bishari marks both vowel and Tashdit. So one uh, sign for two uh, pieces of information. In manuscript with a partial vocalization marker system, the distribution of Shadda symbols has different patterns. The pattern that occurs most uh, frequently that I was able to uh, observe up to now is that uh, the, the symbol, when uh, it is used, uh, mark a proper germination only and not the assimilation. Uh, in some manuscripts, the Tashdit symbol is used only to mark the germination in words that would have uh, another meaning without Tashdit. Uh, thus, for example, in the pair Kadaba uh, Kadaba, uh, so to lie or to accuse of lying, the Tashdit symbol is added uh, to distinguish the two contrastive sounds only when it, when it is needed, when it's the only uh, possible uh, uh, sign to distinguish the two uh, words. So, uh, as I told you, we are still collecting data for observing the distribution of the Shadda, but I would like to make a further observation about the shape of the symbols used uh, in correspondence of the Tijd and its position as a uh, possibly a suprasegmental sign. So, in, uh, this two -leaf frag in a two-leaf fragment from Damascus, uh, uh, that is also uh, modern science for the vowels. The Shadda symbol is uh, constituted by two vertical uh, wavy lines in red ink, which uh, to my knowledge uh, have not been described in previous literature and I would be just happy to hear uh, that someone has uh, um, already uh, an interpretation for that. So it is used to mark the uh, proper gemination for distinguishing mainly pair of words, but also to mark assimilation when only one consonant is kept in the uh, consonantal skeleton. Uh, in this manuscript, uh, likely from Damascus II, uh, the Shadda symbol is uh, represented by a, a horizontal line with a semicircle, uh, which again, uh, to my knowledge, has not been described. Uh, in previous literature. So as regards its uh, distribution, it is used uh, as well to mark mainly the proper germination for distinguishing pair words, but not only, and we are still working on the, on the pattern. Uh, what is interesting is the position of this symbol, if the position has a meaning. So here, the same verb, kadaba, uh, uh, is a, the, the symbol for the germination. Uh, of Dal, but as you can see, the symbol uh, is not placed in the same position. So it is placed between uh, Dal and Ba uh, in the three examples uh, on the left, or between Kaf and Dal uh, in the picture at the top right. In Dukira, uh, we have the same. So the position of the, sh the Shada is the same. It's between the first and the uh, second uh, letter. Um, so my initial hypothesis, um, and I'm going in this direction, is that the position can mark as well the stress. As regards its shape, um, I haven't yet um, 
a precise argument for explaining these wavy lines. Uh, we are working on that, and I mean uh, with the uh, Cambridge team also. Uh, so what I can observe is uh, uh, basically there being a connection between two syllables, somehow similarly to the joining line between the uh, letters dal and tha that you can see at the uh, bottom right. So if the symbol is a, a mark, um, so if it is the case, so if it is a joining element, uh, again, the symbol uh, can mark a suprasegmental feature. And so uh, my second uh, situation that I would like to uh, show you is related again to a suprasegmental uh, sign category. Uh, regarding the, the dots. So according to the uh, accepted model, as we have seen in uh, uh, Marine's presentation, um, the dots have three rather clearly defined positions. I would say domain in terms of space uh, around the letter, except of course the very complicated uh, case of uh, uh, Wow, Aleph and Ya with Hamza, and in general the Hamza. But for the rest, uh, uh, according to the accepted model, the dots have three clear uh, defined uh, positions. Um, but then in the manuscript reality, we have a wider range of possibilities. And these possibilities uh, mean that the dots are, at the end, difficult to be understood unequivocally, at least in this early manuscript, uh, uh, not written at all for hosting vowel dots. Uh, so my focus is on those dots that are placed uh, between words, uh, thus crossing uh, uh, word boundaries in order to explore the possible nature as suprasegmental sign. So here uh, you can see the final uh, dot for Castra in uh, Alamueli is uh, physically attached uh, to the wow of the following word. So the transcription that we are using uh, uh, and that we um, developed encodes uh, this dot, uh, which is below the letter, but placed at its left, piercing the first letter of the following word. So in this uh, transcription in uh, Latin alphabet and, and other symbols, uh, we put all these uh, pieces of information. And I'm going to show you uh, very quickly some further examples taken from the same manuscript. Uh, so here you have uh, Allahi or Lillahi. So the same uh, dot, uh, the same word, same vocalization, but different position for the final vowel. Um, here is another example, so Fajama'a. Uh, uh, and you can see that the dot for um, the final, uh, for the fatha, is uh, uh, placed between the two words. In this example, too, the final dot for, uh, for the castra is placed uh, uh, at the left of the final lamb. And um, how are we sure that this is something not part of the, um, of the system used in the manuscript, so can be another meaning? Uh, because we compare this situation with uh, the possible position of a dot marking castra in the same manuscript after the paleographic annotation of the images that I showed you. So we see that the dot uh, is uh, almost always placed below the letter. So we, uh, we take into consideration the same letter, same position, same uh, dot. So it's placed, the dot is placed below the letter in correspondence of the vertical line of the ascender, so in the middle, at the center of the letter, or at the right of the descender. Uh, so the position at the left in this manuscript is not uh, what is uh, uh, usually used. So one possibility to explore is um, whether the dot position here marks the connection with the following word in the pair, uh, or um, we, we want to see uh, if, uh, whether the connection is not just a visual connection, but is referring to the reading. And I, um, I would uh, go to, toward the conclusion. Uh, 
quoting uh, Alan George, um, final statement in uh, his article. Um, so modern scholarship has tended to approach these manuscripts as uh, the record of a text and as a flat canvas crafted for the eyes. But these were full objects uh, meant to be displayed, studied, and used for recitation. So they conveyed not only an image, but also a sound that carried into the public sphere at the art of daily life in cities and towns." End of quotation. So, to conclude, the investigation of these uh, uh, tiny details of the diacritic layers of the early manuscript can shed light on the orality as a performance, on the oral dimension of the written scriptural text, uh, to quote Graham, as it is evident from the suprasegmental signs uh, that disappeared uh, later, uh, like the, all the signs for uh, Wasla, for example, uh, or like the green line turning upwards that we can see uh, here in this uh, uh, picture. Uh, so the, um, the remediation of the manuscript page uh, makes a manuscript as visual objects uh, that the reader can experience uh, without the mediation of the printed text uh, and have to be understood taking into consideration their plan or executed performance. So this investigation on the diacritics layer sheds light on the materiality of the process of disambiguation of the script of the Quran. Uh, to understand the function of the diacritic strata added along uh, centuries means to understand the new needs that these diacritic symbols aimed at answering, and these needs are particularly evident in those manuscripts with a partial vocalization and those manuscripts in which the dots are a later introduction. So the innovation of the vowel dots and uh, of the whole markup system is part of the changes that the written transmission of the Quranic text underwent, which is exactly the proposed uh, focus of this conference. Uh, so thanks again for this invitation, and of course more results uh, uh, hopefully will follow uh, from the two teams of the uh, inter summit project, so including uh, uh, the uh, the investigation of the possible uh, contacts with the other traditions. So thank you.